have you ever ended a relationship with an avoidant attachment style and then they go pretty quiet? In fact, the silence may be deafening. You may find yourself wondering what are they thinking, what are they feeling, and what are they experiencing? Especially if I were to go no contact and take a big step back from any kind of communication. Well, if you're wondering exactly what a dismissive avoidant experiences during no contact and how this can apply to your particular situation and the output it will have on what happens next in your dynamic, this video is for you. In today's video, we are actually going to talk about the eight stages that a dismissive avoidant attachment style goes through during no contact, specifically after breaking any kind of close or intimate relationship. If you're new here to this channel, my name is Thais and I create daily videos here all about the subconscious mind, attachment theory, and how we can really work to improve our relationship dynamics. Now I want to share a few things in here. Um, a couple of things. I won't like lecture about this too much here, but I do think it's really important that if we are choosing to go no contact post breakup, we do it because we are actually in a place where we know this is what's best for us. I'm for no contact as a general rule, but specifically for the reason that it's like, Hey, let me take space to just focus it on myself. Let me not get distracted. Let me have proper closure, proper boundaries. This will allow me the space I need to really focus on healing. Not every relationship is one size fits all. Sometimes people grieve and do the healing work while still in a relationship and they're moving on and, you know, personally and emotionally internally. There can be so many things that cause breakdowns of relationships, breakups. Um, and what I really want to sort of like focus in on and drink here is just what the dismissive avoidance is feeling once somebody goes no contact with them because I want to shed some light on this for dismissive avoidance to recognize what stage they're in and also for access of dismissive avoidance to understand if you're going no contact and you're not seeming to get like the response you're looking for or things like this, there can be many reasons for why. And it's important to recognize, hey, do no contact for you not to get something out of the other person. But anyways, we can do a whole, we're going to do a whole series on this. So I hope you enjoy. Um, and if you have questions about this stuff, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to add this stuff into the series or into my next um, batch of recording things going forward. So with all of that being said, um, the very first thing, and remember some of these, these stages will depend a little bit um, where you start off based on like how long were you in the relationship? What is the attachment style? It's going no contract contact with the dismissive avoidant post breakup, some of these things, but these seem to be the general path that they gets followed. The first stage is the dismissive avoidant tends to feel relief at first. They tend to feel like, okay, I have space. And this generally happens for dismissive avoidance post breakup. They feel this like weight lifted off their shoulders. Like, okay, these problems, the chaos I couldn't solve, the things that weren't going right in relationship, they see those things removed. And this largely has to do with the fact that fear, or sorry, dismissive avoidance are in their feelings minus their fears. And so dismissive avoidance tend to like have their feelings, but then the more that that like neurochemical cocktail of like attraction, bonding, well-being, all these things that happen um, with phenylethylalamine, oxytocin, serotonin, all these things when we get into relationship with somebody, they start to subside and fade away. And then all of a sudden, a lot of these fears when a DA is feeling more vulnerable and more connected to somebody tend to kind of like come up more strongly. And so they sort of get relief from the fear when that space is gone or that space is there and that person sort of a step back and gone. And so originally they have that sort of relief. Now this doesn't last for that long. And eventually they start to notice stage two, which is this change in a pattern. And they start to become curious and they start to wonder a little bit. And then they go into stage three, which is the fear of missing the person. They start missing the person a little bit. They have the space now. Their fears have not been online for quite some time because there's no like request for vulnerability, need to open up, um, pressure to really bond and connect, the fear of like the impending doom that often comes with that because of the DA's programs at the subconscious level of mind, all these things have space. So now whatever like feelings were there, those start to come back online. But then we go into the next stage, which is the stage where the dismissive award usually pushes the feelings back down and compartmentalizes them. And dismissive avoidance are very skilled at this. This is part of how they learn to like adapt, survive. Um, but it's so important for dismissive avoidance to learn how to 
see their feelings as feedback, work through what their feelings are communicating to them about their unmet needs or the painful stories they're telling themselves um, and do that inner work to create actual relief instead of just repression. And there's a huge difference for how it impacts us long-term, how we carry things as, as potential baggage into future relationships or not. Um, and just the overall feeling of well-being we can feel when we do that inner work and we actually like relieve a lot of these things from our subconscious mind. Now, Dismiss avoidance seem like it's parked there and they feel better. And so much of how they tend to deal with breakups is like, I will do whatever I can to not feel. And that means I don't want a catalyst for anybody. Like if I miss somebody and I'm thinking of texting them and going towards them, I, I don't want them to hurt me again. I don't want to feel vulnerable again. I don't want to open myself up again. I assume the worst a little bit. And that's how DAs tend to sort of react quite a bit. And so they tend to like really put that barrier up accordingly. So these are really important things to pay attention to. I'm going to go through the next stages, but also if you are a dismissive avoidant and you are going through a breakup or you're a loving one of a dismissive avoidant, you can check out our how to heal from a breakup course. We talk about no contact, the stages of no contact, how it affects people differently, all the stuff in so much detail, as well as exactly the, the steps and tools you need to shorten the grieving time that's there post breakup. So you can feel more like yourself and more whole and more relieved um, deeply and like a greater sense of well being post breakup a lot more quickly than you would otherwise. Um, now, once we see this like pushing down, like, okay, I'm missing, I'm, I'm now pushing down and compartmentalizing. Um, there tends to be the space that arises to go back more into their feelings. And this is the stage for the DA that's like a little bit of a war with themselves. It's subtle, it's not something that's strong, but oftentimes like the dismissive avoidant goes through this internal battle of like feeling something a little bit and then trying to push it away. Feeling something, trying to push it away. And they often um, push it away through preacher comforts and coping mechanisms. And in this stage, they tend to really have a lot more of those creature comforts and coping mechanisms become more prevalent. And so like, let's say for example, it's like eating junk food or like watching television or playing video games or whatever it is that like gives the DA that sense of comfort and security and like escapism. You'll usually see in the stage of no contact post breakup, like a lot of these coping mechanisms become more pronounced. They play video games more, they eat more junk food. They, um, whatever it might be, watch more television, like these sorts of dynamics tend to grow. Um, and then our next stage is this means the ones tend to sort of grapple with regret a little bit and, and, um, and can feel sort of like, you know, I wish I'd said this, or I wish I did this. And a lot of people will be like, no, DAs don't do that, but they do a lot of the time. Not always. Sometimes they'll just push further down and compartmentalize more and escape more. Um, but it is something that I've seen a lot of DAs sort of reflect upon to a small degree and for periods of time. Then we get into the stage where if there hasn't been some kind of like internal work and improvement, I actually do see a lot of dismissive avoidance, especially if it was a longer relationship, a more meaningful relationship. And especially if they derive like a sense of comfort and security from that relationship, they can often feel quite hurt, alone, and disconnected in this stage. And this tends to be the most difficult stage for the DA, where it's like there's been enough space and time to really like feel and then to really like accept, hey, this is gone. And then to feel like, hey, my creature comforts, I've tried to go in this direction to heal and feel better, but it's not really working. And then it's sort of like there's nowhere to go. And some of that hurt tends to come up a little more strongly. And then we'll often see the last sort of stage is to go back into a greater state of numbness over time. Um, but usually it's after quite a while of feeling a certain degree of pain. Now, in a best case scenario, we have a DA like digging into their feelings working through things, doing reprogramming work, doing healing work, having any conversations to make amends as needed, although we tend to not really address that too often, but really doing the subconscious reprogramming work around traits, needs, stories we're telling ourselves, um, and really perception balancing at the subconscious level to like create relief. But if not, that tends to be sort of the, the trajectory that the DA goes about like that hurt, that like pain, there tends to be a vulnerability stage of feeling all that emotion to a certain degree. And then like something to, you know, really supersede that over time to numb it more as that pain starts to, we adapt to pain. That tends to be sort of how we all are, but dismissive avoidance tend to become uh, more adept at that over time. And especially after they've sort of sat in that for a period of time as well. So these are our major stages, um, post breakup, especially during no contact. Um, let me know if you have other questions in the comments below about this, about, um, breakup stages in general. I'll make future videos about them. I know we get a lot of questions about this inside PDS. So that is it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.